Outer Hebrides seem an improbable place for God to visit, yet the heavens have been rent over this ancient land with remarkable regularity. These visitations have been called revivals, but they are unlike anything most of us have ever experienced. A revival is not only uh, biblical, but uh, believe in revival because it is historical. It started off in 1939. A few of them gathered together for a prayer meeting. Before they knew where they were, the house was packed. They were coming from all over the island, directed by the Lord. I realized that something very significant had happened the previous night. There was something quite strange, almost eerie, in the atmosphere in the house. And from the moment one came into the crowded meetings, one was aware of an atmosphere which I couldn't describe and I couldn't explain. We felt this power and uh, afterwards even the dishes were clattering. It was as if, as if uh, the Lord came down with a mighty wind. The, the house shook with the power of prayer and the presence of the Lord. Walking on the main road they would be crying out to God to have mercy on them. They were lying down on the road for God to have mercy on them. It was as if there was a canopy of an awareness of God over the whole island. You couldn't be indifferent to what was happening. The drinking houses of the village, they gradually disappeared one by one. People were being saved every night. There was a complete transformation. And the people in the world knew it. God had come. That was the answer. Sadly, many societies around the world remain desperately ill. Their deep spiritual and social wounds crying out for the salve of God's presence. Canada's vast Arctic territories have been inching toward death for most of the 20th century. The land is so cold that even trees refuse to grow. But it's the inner barrenness that kills. Uh, it was awful. It was terrible, alcohol everywhere. Oh, we had violence, wife abuse, violence against other people, breaking, sexual abuse. I was drinking alcohol myself very much. I would turn to sniffing solvents, gas, dope, drinking. We had an enormous epidemic of suicide of youth. Then came the realization that a lot of our children were experiencing sexual abuse. Every single family was touched. It was total darkness at the time. Far to the south, the nation of Uganda has likewise spent several decades in a deep spiritual coma. Racked with demonic fevers, this one-time pearl of Africa became Idi Amin's personal house of horrors. I think Uganda has been a country of pain, a country which has gone through one military coup to another. For a long time, Uganda has been under civil war. You, you couldn't see any hope. In those days, it was common to find bodies killed, I mean, lying by the roadside. And sometimes people would go to look over just to make sure is it a person I know, a loved one? If not, they would just go on. It was being predicted AIDS would be so bad in Uganda that one third of the population will have died from AIDS. What has Uganda done to God? It looks like God hates us. If history teaches us anything, it is that God's heart is as big as the sea. His reach extending with grace and precision to the very ends of the earth. The healing process began. It's amazing, amazing to see the, the transformation from where the nation was found to where it is today. People are getting saved. People are being healed. We have seen the AIDS virus healed, and the doctors go, wow, I can't explain this, but there must be a God up there somewhere. Every day in Uganda, there is a new church starting up or a ministry starting up. The gospel has introduced 
new changes even in the structure of the government. Now we have a new ministry called the Ministry of Ethics and Integrity. We never used to have that. Ah, here I am. I'm the Moses of Uganda. The Lord has appointed me here to lead Uganda from UNESCO conduct, moral decadency, corruption to the right direction. Prayer really has a part in the politics in every part of us Ugandan society. In this parliament, we have a fellowship of Christians. To be in the police, to me, I feel it's a divine calling. I've taken my faith up to the governmental level. In the presence of the president and the first lady, we dedicated the nation to God and then covenanted the nation to God for the next 1,000 years. This is Nakivubo Stadium. We've been having uh, an overnight prayer meeting. Uh, it's uh, much prayer, but also a celebration. When they see what the country is today, it really is a miracle. It wouldn't have been possible if it hadn't been for the Lord. I have seen this community just transformed by the power of God. So many marriages were healed. Many families were healed. I've seen men get up and publicly repent that I have abused my children and, and I've abused my wife. God is saving these people we never thought could be changed. We've had a lot of young people themselves turning to Jesus for the answers that they never found in drugs or whatever else they were into. Our children in the school is about 50. All of them are safe. All of them are born again. Many of the mayors are Christians. They were starting to get more animals than ever before. Fish in the lakes were starting to grow. Even the land is starting to produce little plants. We are so blessed. Suicide, that's completely gone on the downtrend. We pray for our community. We broke the curse in our community. Yeah, uh, it changed. It completely changed. You can visit every community and you, they can tell you the same story. In Kanyatsujuak, in Kujuak, Kwaktek, Aupaluk, Panilet, Puvundok, Pearl Harbor, Clyde River, Arctic Bay. We have an all forgiving and almighty God, and families have been healing over these past six, seven years now, and it's, it's been wonderful. To those who would ask, why did God move so powerfully in these particular regions? The answer is simple. He was invited. The people were praying all the time for this revival. They would be praying in the barns. Their faces would be tear-stained. There's a price to pray for a revival. There's prayer. There's tears. Tears of repentance. We must pray earnestly. And it's the kind of desire that deeply yearns to the, to the Lord. The moments of refreshing from the Holy Spirit that we are experiencing today did not come easy. And these prayers were traveling. They were painful praying. But come to us, come visit us. Revive.